Hi everyone, my name is Kristen Van Leuven and in this video I'm going to show you how to make this watercolor holiday card. For the materials, you'll need watercolor paper. I'm using these pre-made watercolor cards by Strathmore. The textured side comes on the inside, so I just flip it to the outside. But having these already pre-made makes card making so easy. You'll also need watercolor. I'm using my set of Daily Rowney watercolor paints. And the specific colors I'm using from the set for this project are transparent turquoise, indigo, sap green, and alizarin crimson. I'll be using a three quarter wash brush and a Princeton round size eight. We're also going to be using salt for a fun snowy technique, as well as white gouache for snow on the trees as well. And then of course you'll need a clean jar of water, some paper towel for dabbing your brush, and I also like to tape off my paintings with masking tape. So I'm going to start by masking off my painting. This is going to help everything stay in place because I'm washing the entire card. And then we're going to take the three quarter wash brush and just wet the entire surface of the card with clean water till it has a slight glistening look. You want to make sure it's very wet but not puddled. You can already tell that the paper starts to buckle and that's why the masking down of the card will really help. So we're going to start by adding our first lightest blue color the transparent turquoise. So I'm getting a wash on my tray using water to make sure I have a really light wash that's not very pigmented and adding that immediately after I've wet the entire card so that it really flows and blends. I want it mostly directed towards the middle, it's our middle color. And because I want the bottom of our card to be white snow, I'm going to pat around the bottom to keep that area white and clean. So I'm again adding more pigment towards the middle to top. And then I'm just going straight in with my indigo color. I'm not even adding it to my tray just purely adding it to the top of our card. This is going to create a lot of atmosphere, having the two colors blending together for this uh, snowy tree scene. Now I'm going to really thoroughly clean my brush and pat it dry just a bit and use my brush to blend those two colors on the paper just a little bit better. I'm not going to worry too much about it because the next step is adding salt. And you wanna add the salt very quickly so that everything is very wet because the salt soaks up the color and it can't soak up the color and make these beautiful blooms unless it's very wet paper. And then once it's dry, you can remove the salt and it just has this really cool effect that I think looks like snow. Now we're going to pick up our size eight brush to work on our background trees. I added a little bit of indigo to the turquoise we already had on our palette to get a slightly darker hue than what we already have on our paper. We want it to stand out a little bit, but we don't want it to be the focus of our painting. So this color I have here is perfect because remember watercolor will dry lighter than you first initially think it will. Um, so for these trees, you want them to be a little bit more abstract, just kind of making really thin to large swiping motions to the left and to the right. I'm not worrying too much about the details because they are not the focus, they are the background trees. So play around with the height of the trees. You can see on this one to the right, I added a little bit more indigo. It's just slightly darker. Play around with the texture, with the height, with the different shapes. You want them to look like they are layered and in the background, in the distance. So you don't want them to be detailed. So I'm mostly using the tip of my brush to swipe out those branches. I'm going to clean my brush and get some water on it and just use my brush to smooth out those branches. So it looks more uh, misty and hazy, not as detailed with kind of the snow in the background. Continue to make as many trees as you want. I did five. Just wanted to get a good look of a forest in the background before I made the main trees in the front. Once our trees in the back have dried, we are going to add some sap green to our tray to get a darker blue green color to paint our main focus trees. We want the pigment here to be really intense and strong so they stand out. I'm taking a little bit more time in creating the branches of this tree because it's in the foreground. We want it to look more detailed as if it's right in front of us. So if you think about a tree, it's obviously a triangle shape 
but a lot of the branches kind of have like a swooping motion. So I'm focusing on starting towards the center of the tree and making these, you know, little swoopy motions for the texture of the branch and then swooping the tips up just a little bit. I'm leaving gaps in between so I can visualize where each branch is. And then later we're going to add the white snow on top. So just kind of gives you an idea of the shape of your tree. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be exact. Trees come in so many different shapes and sizes. We're also going to paint two more trees because I like the way three of something looks. And then we will add more details to our trees once they have dried. I'm adding a little bit more indigo to the wash we already have on our tray. And I made this really dark pigmented green blue color and I'm just putting very lightly with the tip of my brush some shadows on the bottom of our tree branches. I'm going to pick up a very light wash of our transparent turquoise and I'm just going to start playing with the idea of a really blue glistening shadow for each of these trees on our snow. So when we think of snow, sometimes we think of it as being white, but actually snow has a lot of the colors around it reflecting off of it. So because our trees are in this very snowy blue forest right now, we're going to do a nice bright blue shadow. You can also make sure that your shadow has a little bit of texture on the edges because of the texture of the trees. And I'm going to put a little bit more pigment around the base of the trees to represent a darker color right where underneath the tree would be for our shadow. I'm adding the tiniest bit of alizarin crimson to my tray and then mixing it with that dark blue color we already have. And this is the color I'm using for the trunk and branches of our trees. I'm just using the very tip of my brush to lightly connect all of those branches to each other so it looks more complete. Once our trees are totally dried, we get to use our white gouache to create the snow on our trees. And typically with watercolor, we like to save the white of the paper as much as possible when we are adding white elements to our paintings. But I really love the effect that white gouache gives when creating snow because you can kind of dab it on in a very organic way and it looks like snow falling on the trees. So you'll want to add the snow on top of the branches. Make sure you're varying the shape and size so it looks like naturally, organically formed clumps of snow. And then don't totally overwhelm the tree with snow. We want to still see the color of the tree underneath. And because we had talked about before snow not being totally white, it has a reflection of color. We're going to add a little bit of color, some light blue and light green, just very lightly. I'm barely touching the snow with my brush, but it just gives that reflection look to the snow, gives it a lot more depth. You do not have to add this part, but I think adding some kind of phrase really takes it from a painting to a card. So I added all as calm on the bottom. It felt very perfect for this scene. And then my favorite part of any painting process is taking the tape off because you can really see how your card looks once you do that. Thank you so much for being here while we painted this holiday card. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned some fun techniques for your card making this year. I'll see you all next time. Bye.